What's going on YouTube, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video and today I'm finally bringing my review of the Huawei P30 Pro. Now I've been using this for a very long time now, in fact since launch and I've used it enough to figure out all the little niggles and all the best bits about the device. But without further ado, let's get into it. The Huawei P30 Pro is hands down one of the best looking smartphones out there, especially in this breathing crystal version which sometimes looks white, it can look blue in some instances and you can even see some traces of purple sometimes. Elsewhere, I like the side button placements. I particularly like how easy it is to make uh, selfies using those volume rocker buttons on the side. Um, for those who are still interested in controlling your TV and set-top boxes using your phone, you can even use the IR Blaster that's there as well, which is pretty cool. If I have anything bad to say about the P30 Pro's design, it would be that one, it's very slippery, so you better get a case for it. The curved edges are eye-pleasing aesthetically, but it serves no extra functions like the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, for example. Although I like that you can expand the storage using Huawei's own nano memory card, you don't get an adapter for it, so if you need to transfer files without using a cable, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. Huawei also have a replacement for the top earpiece, which is traditionally just a speaker, but now they've used a vibrating technology that's underneath the screen. And while this is very useful in crowded areas, it means that you only get one down firing speaker on the bottom, which isn't too loud as well. So when compared to say the S10 Plus when watching Netflix, it doesn't sound that clear or very good. You also lose the headphone jack as well, but you get a USB-C adapter in the box, but it means you have to decide whether you want to charge your phone or listen to music when it comes to it. Finally, the P30 Pro is also IP68 water and dust resistant, which is useful. The P30 Pro is very durable in my experience, and even with a glass front and back, I've dropped mine a few times and it's still standing. And unlike the Galaxy S10 Plus, the screen doesn't have scratches after a few months of use and putting in your pocket. The P30 Pro's in-screen fingerprint sensor works really well as well and you also get a face uh, unlock feature which is faster than ever. Furthermore, the P30 Pro screen is excellent although sometimes it suffers from glare when using it in daytime but it's very vibrant and in my opinion I think looks pretty much accurate. Another area where the P30 Pro reigns supreme is battery life and with the 4200mAh battery and some AI trickery, the P30 Pro lasts all day comfortably with some battery left to use in the first half of the next day. The only downside to this though is some background apps sometimes suffer from lack of notifications. So sometimes the P30 Pro will suppress the background activity to save battery life. So sometimes you have to go into things like your messenger app to manually load up notifications or see what new messages you have. Software is still an issue for me when it comes to Huawei devices. It's not that close to the pure Google Pixel 100 experience that you get. It has some bloatware in there in this day and age which I don't get why. The gestures aren't that seamless, it works sometimes and sometimes it conflicts with swipe, the swiping functions when using some of the applications available. I also get frustrated with the notification area when tapping the Twitter notification for example, it won't take me to Twitter. What happens is you have to select the notification, then it expands it, then you tap the first one on there for example, the individual one, and then it loads up Twitter to see that individual notification before navigating the rest of Twitter. Sometimes I find that very frustrating and I would like to just tap that batch of notification and load up and load up Twitter for all the notifications that I have. For processor performance, it's one of the best out there with Kirin 980 processor and combined with 8 gig of RAM and a dual MPU, it really does deliver. It doesn't lag at all, it still feels just like new from when I took it out of the box. When gaming, it's also very good at handling any Android games that's available that you throw at it, but it does get a little bit warm after a while. Finally, the reason why I'm still conflicted with which device I use as my daily device uh, or daily driver as we know it. It's because even if I hated everything to do with a P30 Pro, which I don't by the way, I can never leave the camera. It has one of the best low light capabilities when it comes to the software AI hacks and the large sensors available there as well. While we also introduced the new IYYB instead of the RGB that we all we usually are used to seeing. Huawei says it improves its low light capability and if that's true, it's not something that I can place my finger on as the success of the P30 Pro's camera capabilities. Having said that though, the P30 Pro camera is not all singing and dancing as it may seem. It does have its flaws. Uh, first, the video function still needs work. It doesn't support 60 frames per second when shooting in 4K for example. And for some reason when you select 40 megapixels you can't zoom uh, or go wide at all. Which makes sense because when you select 40 megapixel, it only takes you to that 40 megapixel sensor. But it disables the other sensors for whatever reason. When filming or even taking photos, you notice the changes in colors and consistency in the quality, especially when because it switches between the lenses as well. So for example, if you're filming something and you go from a wide angle to five times zoom to 10 times zoom, 
you notice the shift in color performance and saturation and so on. Shooting in 50 times hybrid zoom is very tricky as well. You would need a very steady hand. And if you try it with videos, um, good luck. Besides that, the P30 Pro might need you to toggle on the AI feature, toggle it on or off uh, to make sure you get the best you can because sometimes the AI might be too intrusive in the quality of the pictures that you're taking. If all else fails, you can always switch to pro mode where you can manually adjust things and it saves in DNG format so you can do some post-processing. To summarize, the P30 Pro is a beautiful device. It has all it takes on paper to be more than it can in the real world. But I think in Huawei's ambitious efforts to make it the best smartphone camera there is, uh, consistency has been compromised for me. It's the reason why I still find myself carrying my S10 Plus as a backup device for when I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. For now, I'll be switching back to the OnePlus 7 Pro as my daily driver so I can finish my review for that. So do stay tuned for that as well. So that's it for the Huawei P30 Pro, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with some of the points made? Do you not? Let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe and if you haven't hit the bell notification as well, make sure you do so so you know every time there's a new video on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.